Hey guys, what is going on? Abby here. Welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today, we are taking a second look at the stasis build, and I'm actually going to throw in a solar build for you guys as well. But if you didn't know already, with the hotfix today, the artifact mod Thermoclastic Blooming is back in play. It is working again. It works just like it did in my previous stasis video. So make sure you pick this up if you are planning on rocking a stasis or solar hunter. This also works great on Warlock as well since they both have kind of ranged melee options. The other thing you want to make sure to pick up is at the helm go on over to the Wayfinder's Compass and you're going to see that they've got some stasis mods in there today. So make sure you go ahead and pick up this elemental time dilation and the elemental shards. Now we won't be using the time dilation in our builds today, but you definitely want this elemental shards right here. Our stasis shards are now going to count as stasis elemental wells, which is amazing because that means we've got another mod slot where we can put something else. So let's get into the build. For stasis, we've got Gilbush dodge on. This is important so we can get our melee back if we dodge near enemies. The grenade doesn't matter as much, but I like the dust fill grenade because it pulls enemies in towards each other, makes it a lot easier to get more melees in. However, there is a cooldown on the thermoclastic blooming, so you won't get a ton of orbs for a ton of enemies hit all at once. So you can really choose whatever grenade you prefer. For our aspects, we're going with Touch of Winter and Grim Harvest. These are basically so that we can get four fragments. Grim Harvest you want 100% because that's what's giving us the stasis shards. The first fragment we've got is Whisper of Rhyme, which is going to give us an overshield for every stasis shard we collect. Now this can get pretty crazy if there's lots of little adds that you can just hit with your melee or hit with your Ager Scepter. Either way, you're going to get shards that you can pick up for overshield. This is going to be great in those solo loss sectors, in nightfalls, in endgame activities where you need a little bit of protection. Now you could swap this out for something else and I'll give you guys some options at the end if you don't have these particular fragments. The next one is going to be Whisper of Conduction. Nearby Stasis Shards track to your position. We're also going to get 10 Resilience and 10 Intellect from this. This is not necessary, but honestly, it is such a great quality of life, especially if you're dodging backwards to get more melee charge. Those shards will track to you from a pretty nice distance away and they're counting as wells too. So you're getting wells and shards and they're all just tracking it to your position. The third stasis fragment that we're going to slot here is Whisper of Fissures. This is going to increase the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. This is really great for Aegir's Scepter. It's not as great for just our melees, but I would highly recommend it if you're using Aegir Scepter. If you're not, you could use a different option, which I'm going to show you guys at the end here. And then our last fragment is Whisper of Bonds. Defeating frozen targets grants you super energy. You are going to be a super conductor with this build. With the orbs, with the super energy from here, with everything all together, you are really going to be generating a lot, a lot of super energy for yourself and your teammates. Now for those fragments I said you could swap out, you could use Whisper of Refraction, which is going to give you class ability energy when you defeat slower or frozen targets. If you have low mobility, this could be a great option for you. Whisper of Durance is also a great option. This is going to make your super last longer, your grenades last longer, the slow from all your abilities last longer. If you notice you're not getting as much melee energy from picking up the stasis shards, you could also go with Whisper of Hunger. Now this is going to take 10 mobility and 10 recovery, so it's kind of a hit to those important stats that we want as a hunter. All right, now that we know the subclass, let's take a look at the weapons. We're going to be using Aegir Scepter. Now you could change this out for Peace Bond, Volpecula, Traveler's Chosen with Osmosis. Any weapon with Osmosis would work great with this. We're going to be getting a boost to stasis weapon damage. So anything with stasis is a great mix and match based on the activity you're in. Like if there's unstoppable, maybe you want to go sidearm. If there's like barrier and overload, you can actually account for overload with your melee. So you can have Age Receptor on for those difficult activities like the Nightfall. For your secondary, you can use really anything you want. If you have a primary in that kinetic slot, you could choose one of the fusion rifles that we have. You could go with a bow, basically whatever you want in that energy slot. And then in our heavy, we have Reed's Regret because it is stasis, but you could use any linear fusion rifle or sword or whatever you want, really. For our armor, these are the mods that you want. On our helmet, we've got high energy fire and double hands-on. The double hands-on is from the artifact. This is going to give us super energy on 
melee kills, which we're going to be getting a lot of. Then on our arms, we've got Thermoclastic Blooming, which is a key to this build. You're going to be dropping orbs of power every time you get a stasis melee kill. Then I've also added Elemental Charge. This allows us to become charged with light when we pick up an Elemental Well. This works with Stasis Shards now because of another mod we have on. But if you don't have Elemental Charge, you could also use Taking Charge because we're going to be generating a ton of orbs. I just prefer Elemental Charge because it costs less energy. On our chest piece, we've got Font of Might, picking up an Elemental Well, in this case, picking up a Stasis Shard that matches your subclass energy type, grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of that same Elemental type. So when we pick up a Stasis Shard, we're going to get 10 seconds of Stasis Weapon Damage. Onto our legs, we're using Star Eater Scales, which is going to allow us to get our super even faster, and it's going to allow us to stack up Feast of Light times 8. This is going to give us additional super damage when we cast our super. It's also going to give us an overshield if we don't have one already with our Stasis Shards. But for the most part, we're using this exotic to get our super really fast. I'm also going to show you a way to use it on the solar build, but on the legs, I'm using powerful friends. Now you could not use this if you can get to 90 or hundred mobility without using powerful friends. And if you have to sacrifice it in somewhere, you probably could sacrifice some intellect since we are generating so many orbs. I also have double invigoration on here, reduces melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. And then on our class item, we've got elemental shards. This is a key stasis mod that is going to make those stasis shards count as stasis elemental wells. And it's only two energy, so we're swapping that out with the melee well maker that we used to have on here, which was four energy. So we're getting a little bit of energy back. This stasis build is so much fun because you're going to be freezing a ton of stuff, mailing all the little red bars, getting your melee back super fast. You're dropping shards for all your teammates, which means their melees are coming back fast. Also, you're dropping orbs of power, so everybody's super is regening really fast. It's just a great all-around support build, and it's stasis, which is a lot of fun in endgame activities because you can free stuff a lot of the time, including Aegis Scepter, which is the brand new exotic and amazing for ad clear. Speaking of Aegir's Scepter, I forgot the best part. The Catalyst, which just came out this week, allows you to drain your super energy, overflows the magazine, and empowers the beam with bonus damage. It's about 80% bonus damage as long as you're hitting the critical, and it also slows and freezes targets until the magazine or super energy is out, so you don't have to get a kill to get that slow field. The other really cool thing about it is that if you don't need all of that super energy to go into the weapon, you can just switch weapons and it will refund you the amount of super that you didn't use. Unfortunately, Star Eater Skills does not work with this weapon in the way that it would boost your super's damage, but it will help you get your supers faster. So if you need extra boss damage or you need someone to apply stasis for focusing lens, this is the weapon you want to use. Another option for an exotic is also to use Assassin's Cowl instead of Star Eater Scales. Assassin's Cowl is going to make you invisible every time you get a powered melee final blow. So this could be really great in those solo loss sectors so that you're just constantly cycling through invisible and melee and invisible and melee. It also restores a portion of your health and shields, making it again a great option for the solo loss sectors or high-end content like Nightfalls. Now, if we wanted to change this build to solar to take advantage of the Star our eater scales damage boost let's go ahead and switch over to solar we're gonna go middle tree a blade barrage now you could choose a golden gun however i like middle tree because when enemies burn our dodge ability recharges faster and when we kill a burning enemy it's gonna recharge our knife trick more quickly which is what we're using to get the wells and the orbs so with solar obviously you would choose some solar weapons corsair's wrath is a great linear fusion we've got a borrowed time here Cartesian coordinate is also a great option. 1k is also a great option. That would be probably pretty insane. And then for mods, the only thing we did to change it out is to put elemental charge on our cloak and then we put melee well maker on our arms. So you just need this melee well maker instead of that stasis mod that's going to change stasis shards into wells. And that's it. We've still got our font of might, which is going to give damage to our solar weapons, and we've still got high energy fire. As you guys can see from the gameplay, it's a super fun build to run any of these builds, the Solar or the Stasis, Assassin's Cowl or Star Eaters. They are super fun. Thermoclastic Blooming being back just makes me a happy camper. I don't know about you guys, but we're going to be dropping a lot more orbs in a lot more activities. 
I will leave you guys with some gameplay. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Sloppy. Vex have moved in behind them. Watch your back or you'll get caught in the crossfire.